In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed, and his clothes became dazzling white. There are two amazing interpretations that are compressed together here and interwoven, not unlike the mysterious time compression and expansion that is also present in this event we call the Transfiguration. It follows Peter's confession of Jesus as the Messiah, the one who is to come, and has further overtones of the confession of Jesus' divine nature as well. Here, immortal and mortal meet in the splendor of Jesus' glory revealed. From the past, to the Jewish disciples of Yeshua, hearing of this would have been further evidence to bolster their apocalyptic expectations of the last days, the coming of the Messiah, and finally, finally, the kingdom and reign of God. For was it not foretold that the greatest of the prophets, Elijah, would return even as he was taken away into the heavens? And the most central human figure of the Hebrew experience, the giver of the law, Moses himself, also appears. What more proof do you need of who this Yeshua from Nazareth really is? To the Greek God-fearers, also becoming disciples of Jesus, perhaps looking forward, they would see their own philosophical and metaphysical expectations revealed. The numinous, the real, the glory of God revealed in our mortal and oh-so-imperfect copy of reality. The theosis and metamorphosis of humankind finally transformed, born anew into immortal being. As Jesus told the thief on the cross, even this day you will be with me in paradise. We have the great Eastern Father Origen to thank for connecting the resurrection and the transfiguration together. And indeed, it would seem that Jesus himself in the Gospel account recognizes the connection by commanding that none speak of what they have seen until his resurrection, as was noted by Origen. The intention seems to be that you're not going to get this until the resurrection. It is this connection that I want to explore for a few minutes, and the connection it has to our ordinary lives so long after these events. As we too wait, wait ever so patiently, or in my case, rather impatiently, for the kingdom of God. It strikes me that Jesus was often unrecognized in the resurrection accounts, just as in the transfiguration, where he is so changed by the glory of him, him, and we, just like the disciples before us, can easily miss the glory revealed in our own simple lives. Have you ever seen a news story or maybe a social media video where some ordinary person is, I don't know, maybe handing out water to people at a natural disaster, or maybe they're helping clean up, a clean up a beach, and all of a sudden, they realize they are standing there in the muck with, I don't know, Zendaya or Matt Damon or pick your favorite celebrity crush. There is this total disconnect with reality, right? It is funny to see the person trying to wrap their minds around the fact that this celebrity is a real person. Just picking up some, some trash on the beach, bruh. No biggie. The transfiguration is kind of like that, but in reverse. We are often just hanging out in the muck, maybe at a march for human rights, caring for children in our local schools or in Haiti, volunteering in the pantry or at TFAP, finding shelter for immigrants, treating our homeless like the human beings they are. The needs of the world for God's love right here in Westport are endless, it seems. And just when we think we've had enough, when, maybe I should use eye language here, when I wonder, what is the point of caring for this little mustard seedling that is supposed to be a tree, I mean, come on already, that never seems to grow much in our short lives? It's frustrating. And then someone, 
just an ordinary someone, one of you, will suddenly be Jesus for us, still redeeming our broken world, and we will see the love that you put into all that you do for God's kingdom, for that little seedling. And we will see the witness to the glory, and just for a moment, it's just a flash, like the apostles today, we're a bit sleepy, not really paying attention as someone goes praying and praying and praying, <laughs> wondering if we we're dreaming. But the experience will give us a sense of, I don't know, maybe peace, of realizing that it, it's not okay right now, but it will be. And we are all, all of us for a moment, transfigured. And our hope in the resurrection is real. And we will see our Lord again. And so Peter tells us today, so beautifully, as he himself prepares for death, you will do well to be attentive to this as a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. <laughs>